Here he is, old Rumpelstiltskin. You hard for it today, Marsha? No. It's uh, it's just quite a uh, yeah, quite a windy one, is it not? <coughs> yes, yes. I, th oh, I was wondering if I'd still have fence panels. Just wondering. Yeah, I've cut myself already. Uh, and know. not the kind of wind that emanates forth either from uh, Rachel's arse. Not that kind of wind, like uh, like a, a screaming banshee, Nigel, like one of the devil's own minions. Yeah, it was going some last night. Escaping from the, the dark depths of rectal hell. Yes. To pollute the surface land with the smell of pickled cabbage. <sighs> I haven't eaten cabbage in Not that ages. kind of wind. I love cabbage. <laughs> Rather the kind of wind that uh, blows your wheelie bin over. Yes. That kind of wind. Yes. We had to pick all three of ours up this morning. And we're out Well, the missus did. I think we've got to start with the coffee, don't you? Yeah, why not? I do believe there's some blue sky, Mr Marsh. Yes, yes. So, uh, last night. after the, the wind and blustery showers of last night, I, think, I don't know if it's going to last, and this is outdoor lighting. Now, the thing with this job is we've got some uncocking of cack to be doing. This is one where we've been here before and we got a call uh, late January to say our power's tripping off. Uh, all right, okay. So um, it was on one of those days where we, we, we were booked on something else, didn't have any availability in the day. It's always a pain in the ass. Why can't they arrange for these trip ha things to happen on no, a different day? Why does it have to be on a day where we're, we're fully booked? So I'm like, oh bloody hell, I haven't got time to get out there today. So I'm trying to diagnose it over the phone. And obviously with a, first of all, you have to find out what kind of trip it is. I'm ascertained pretty quickly it's an RCD trip, uh, losing power to half the house. And I know on that installation, they've got an old BS3036 board, because it's a very old building. The building's hundreds of years old. Yeah. And they've got, and the electrical installation looks like it is as well, to be fair. The, um, they've got a 3036 board, and it's protected wholly by a single RCD. And that's covering the old part of the house. And then there's an extension that's got its own modern board that's yes. separate from that. So when they phoned up saying power's tripping to the old part of the house, I knew it was probably going to be down to that RCD. And obviously RCD trip, you're looking for something usually where water's getting in, or where water's involved in some way. Not always, but water's often the culprit, isn't it? It is, whether it's a washing machine or a outdoor socket or something. Yeah. First thing we always look for is, is it raining? Have they got any exterior electrics? Then we start with things like Nigel says, washing machines, or even things like fridge freezers, because they have moisture yeah. um, in their operation. They don't use water directly, but moisture gets into where it shouldn't get into. Anyway, I've been out there before because they've got an electric gate, and they've had a, a trip problem before. I can't remember if it was RCD or MCB at that point. A couple of years ago, maybe more. Opened up the ascertained it was down to the electric gate. Opened up the box for the electric gate, and I could see that uh, a spider had made a web across the incoming terminals and uh, had been subsequently had its eight legs, eight eyes, and eight bollocks blown right off as it had sort of straddled between the, um, the live nerf terminals. Uh, but that had taken out the the After protective devices it had happened. Meters, cross the roundabout, second exit. So anyway, um, we ascertained again that this fault was down to the electric gate supply, which has just run off a plug top. So they unplug it, RCD stops tripping. Did that over the phone. I went out to have a look at it a few weeks ago. Um, take a closer look at what, what's going on there. Um, as I was pulling pulling up to it, I noticed they had a couple of bollard lights out the front. Class 1 bollard lights. Same model as I've got in my garden. Cross I did a video. The roundabout, second exit. 
did a video sort of three years or so ago about installing that bollard light. Not a great video because there's a lot of wind noise on it, as there might be today with today's gusts. But I converted it to 12 volt light because you're not going to get any tripping off a 12 volt light, you're not going to get any shock risk of a 12 volt light. Better to string 12 volts around the place than 230 volts, yeah? Um, always prefer to do that with garden lighting. If we can get away with 12 or 24 volt self rather than 230 volt, it's going to be better. But So I notice these bollard lights are there and I'm thinking, oh man, who, where, where did they come from? And of course they're one of the first things I looked at because they had one there previously. And uh, it's freaking amateur hour, mate. Some, someone, some relative or friend of the family has come along and put these lights up for them. And they've done it in such a crappy, cack-handed way. And the homeowner said to me, oh uh, yeah, it was very nice of them to do it for us. Uh, and I'm thinking, well, no, it's not. Because you now you're paying me to come and effectively tell you it's shit after you've been inconvenienced through a couple of days of RCD tripping before you called me and now you're going to have to pay us to come out on another day to come and make it all good and the only reason your RCD's been tripping off is because current's been leaking out of circuit it's dangerous to the point where there's a shock risk there so the RCD has done its job inconvenient though it is to lose your power has done its job of saving your skin or the skin of anybody who happens to be coming along and, and touching these things potentially because they're a shock risk so this guy hasn't really done you any favors no. Not at all. So anything, it's kicked them in the bollocks. Yeah, effectively, yeah. It's What's the favour? They, they put something in that worked, not very safely, but that worked for a couple of years before the weather finally got to it and balked it. And I'll tell you why the weather got to it. It's because there's a shitty junction box wrapped in gaffer tape that's been placed in a drain. <laughs> in a fucking drain. So... It rains, drain fills, water gets into electrics, bang. I mean, anything you see wrapped in gaffer tape, you know that's not the sign of a quality installation. So the aim today, if the rain keeps off us, rip out all the rubbish and put in something that's not going to cause any tripping, that's not going to be a shock risk, and that's going to do the job in a basic and interesting way in a way because to get these bollards working with cell we're gonna to have to do a conversion on them. That's all very boring isn't it? Well, it's, uh, I don't feel like I've got the, the pep anymore. An informational introduction. I've got the, the, the pep and jizz for making this stuff anymore you know. Have you got the jizz Nigel? Uh, well, I know you've got those stains down your trousers, which you, uh, you claim are Huel, Huel spillage. <laughs> I have a certain pill for my, uh, my, uh, Dick Spring. Prostate. It prevents stains completely. I see. They're like puffs of air these days. Like an air rifle. Oh, I'll have to put the fluffy hat on my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I realise we look like some kind of fucking teletrub in this too. Well, you are. Right, let's have a look at the saws first of all, shall we? And then I'll show you what horrors like within. So, this is where it is. Oh, look at that. This Lovely. is where the action happens. Lovely. So, this box. Someone's come along and changed this box. Uh, when I was here and that spider had blown its bollocks off, that wasn't this box here, that was a different box, I'm sure of it. So someone's come in the last two, three years, whatever, and put a new box in. But they haven't changed anything else coming out here. So coming out of the ground, at lawn level, we've got an SWA going into, into here. 
obviously the location of that isn't ideal. It's right next to where you're going to be lawn mowing or swimming. Yeah, that is. Moisture's got to it. It's in a shit state. Flat to the ground. Mm. So I think we may have to try and get rid of that, dig up the armoured, torpedo it off so that we've got something to, to play with. And then uh, amateur hour, this is where our man came in. And what a fucking Frankenstein's monster of tap. This is where I disconnected it. Twin and Earth, going into the bottom of that. See, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sprouting out of the bottom of that, like that. Just shonky, eh? Shonky. Which is going into this IP fuse unit that for some reason has been mounted completely on the piss. They've, just, they've put it on the top of that, haven't they? That's what they've done. They've just screwed it to the top of that stump. Not sealed properly at the bottom. You've got a light sensor to activate the lights, which itself is going into another crappily fitted IP box, not sealed properly at the top. And then coming out, you've got... What even, is this armoured? I'm not even sure what this is. We'll have to have a closer look at that. It feels too stiff to be flex. Might be armoured. Anyway, you know what, let's, let's peer in here, shall we? I didn't really look at this at the time, so I just looked at it and thought, well, it's crap and it needs to be sorted out, so I just disconnected it. It's not in it. What is it? It's heighter for something. Yeah. And, and just in, in proper sealing, you can see that the, the fucking creepy crawlers have got into there. I don't know what's going on. What with is this? that gland thing? Yeah, doing? It's like some kind of. Oh, what is that brass arranger? It looks like it's an S. It's an SWA it's just sort of resting on it. It's not actually screwed in or anything, prop. It's resting on the oh. the, the nut part of the gland. And then, yeah, coming off that, we've got what looks like a high tuff or something, which is just cable tied to this fence. And again, it's just waiting for someone to come along with some kind of strimmer or gardening tool or hedge trimmer to tidy all this up and catch it. And then that goes out to the driveway. Let's go and look at that. That's, uh, as you can see, it's not a new building. <laughs> and the reason for these lights is because this is a, not a busy road, but it's a very dark road. So at night, it's a country lane. Yeah. And apparently there, there are, it's a bit accident prone. They want to mark the side of the road here to stop the odd car from zooming along around that corner too fast and landing in the ditch. So these don't need to be super bright, they just need to be on. Yeah. And the lamps we're going to be putting in there are going to be about 200 lumens, which isn't a bad amount of light for this application. They don't have to be... They're, they're not there to show the way, they're there to show the edge of the road. Aren't yeah, exactly. And this one... This is where our problems occur. These are just bolted onto the, the grill. So yeah, if you move that rock, you can actually lift it off and we can see the, the horror, the full horror of what <laughs> Joe Homebase did. <laughs> oh I mean, yeah, it's just... <laughs> I don't want to lie that in the puddle. That is horrendous. It is, isn't it? And you can see it's not sealed. This is all, and this is it's 230 volts, all class one fucking 230 volts. Wrapped up in... In a gutter. Gaffer tape. In a drain. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before either the protective devices had to kick in or someone got hurt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, just nonsense, isn't it? It is. Nonsense. <laughs> Oh, it's held in with a bent screw there. I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah, even the mechanical action of... I mean, we'd have dug this out and post-created them in. We'd, we'd have installed them. I'm not proposing we do that today because I haven't got any post creep with me. Same thing? Yeah, I imagine that perhaps goes straight in. It'll be the same thing there, I expect. I haven't looked at this one. Yeah, so the cable on there is, is going straight up. So what I'm thinking is, we want to try and get that armoured cable out of the ground at the source end. 
in order to terminate that better. Into these as well, this, these are full of water, are these just reflectors? I think they're just reflectors, I don't think they're electric. Because we've got this driveway to cross, there's no easy way to get across there. I think we're going to have to go through the gutter. Yeah. Same as our predecessor did. However, I'm thinking we do it in some Bundy Bendy. Bundy Bendy. Some flex conduit. Yeah. With a HO7 cable. You know, the, um, yep. oh, no, the rubber stuff that's made to be outside. So it's it's got some light protection from the flex conduit. It's HO7 cable. And more importantly, it's 12 volt. So it's not going to... Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It's not going to cause us, or we're not going to cause the homeowner any grief if water gets into where it shouldn't get into. Obviously for that point down there, we'll have to make sure that we put in a waterproof junction. We can't have yeah. another situation like that where you've got a, a shitty box. So cool. we'll put in something like an IP68 T yeah, connector yeah. or something like that. And then flex conduit all the way back to, to where it needs to be. Yes. Let's do that then. It doesn't actually need to be a breaker out here. Where is that? A B6. The whole thing runs off a plug top internally. So if that's got a 5 amp fuse in it, then that's all you need. But you can see that we got nothing to work with on the armoured cable. It just straight out the lawn and straight into the bottom of that box. So we're going to see if we can get some meat back on that. So we can extend it out and do something with it. We're going to want some kind of isolation out here. So we're thinking of sticking in a double pole isolator. Just so you can switch the bugger off. Normally when you're lying on the floor like that, it's in a, a, a shop front, isn't it, Nigel? <laughs> Under some cardboard boxes. Sorry, come on. <laughs> I think the light sensor works, so we should be able to reutilise that. So effectively, it's, it's all this gut bins will be changing or modifying in some kind of way. Oh. Well, we didn't get very far before rain stopped play, did we, Nigel? Well, it is Birmingham area, close, close enough. Oh, no, well, we're, st we're still in still in Warwickshire here, aren't we? Oh, we're not in, we're not in Birmingham. Well, just. I don't hear any gunshots, so uh, we must still be in uh, civilised territory. Don't forget your uh, your coffee there, old sport. I do believe it's going cold. It's done. Who is it? There is some blue sky again over there, though, so uh, I'm confident that this rain is about to pass. In yeah, fact, I think we're... It's quite light now, isn't it? Yeah, just a few drops. April showers in March, it's still March. I'll tell you what, that's uh, global warming for you. I've got a good mind to, to phone up Greta Thunberg and tell her of my observations. <laughs> I'm experiencing April showers in March. It's, it's nuts, mate, it's nuts. She wouldn't know what you're talking about. She doesn't go to school, does she? Uh... What flavour of Huel are you on today? I'm on the... Uh, <coughs> I've mixed one scoop of chocolate with two scoops for vanilla which makes it into uh, an almost almost a Baileys-like taste. You know Baileys, the, uh, mm. that Irish cream the liqueur drink. that you, yeah, you only break out at Christmas? Yeah. Yes, Baileys-like. I'm on uh, summer berries. Oh. Is that why it looks the colour of shite? It's pink. Pink? Well, it's from yesterday. <laughs> I didn't drink yesterday. Mm. I just put it in the fridge. So they get a bit darker overnight. I do believe the rain has stopped, mm. old man. Right, back to it. Have you been to it? Turns out that the post all this is on is post created in, as is the fucking SWA. And now I've just been SDSing it out with the chisel to try and give us some meat to play with, but it's going to make it difficult, isn't it? See this? If I can dig down enough to give us a good length. <laughs> I mean, your your tool isn't quite as satisfying as it could be. Oh, I do keep them coming, Nigel. You got any more? You know, a larger one would be uh, much more uh, satisfying. It would give me the satisfaction I require. What are we going to do? Uh, well, I'm going to keep digging because it feels to me, <laughs> weirdly enough, that this, I think this wood's rotten in the concrete behind. Looks like it. 
So it feels like there's no concrete behind it, even though there probably is. I don't think we're going to have much to work with here, though, are we? No. So it's going to be difficult for us to torpedo that off. But if I can dig a nice groove around here to give us... Because all we had originally was that. What we're thinking of is, is dropping a torpedo on it almost vertically, vertically. aren't we? Vertically, I mean, I can't... The only other way is to start digging up the garden and guessing where this SWA is. We don't want to be getting into... And uh, I'm sure that... Well, I know they don't want us digging up their bloody garden with trenches looking for this cable. This is what we've got to work with. And unfortunately, the person who originally installed it installed it in such a way that only the very end of it was protruding from the concrete. And the gland wasn't concrete. even on properly. So it, it's fucking amateur hour, isn't it? It was, it was yeah. put in by someone who didn't put a lot of thought into it and now it's we've inherited it as a problem and i think the only thing we can really do is as, as we were saying is to it's not it's not ideal but if we drop a, a torpedo on vertically and manage to fill it, fill it yes then that will give us something that we can use to extend it and it will be weatherproof what we don't want to do is start trying to get that back into some kind of Box against the floor again. Yeah, enclosure that's right well, up against the ground. I've got. Do ask. Anyone out there who's designed or manufactured SWA glands, why is the nut steel but the rest of it brass? Because all it does is the nut rots when moisture gets in and just seals itself there. We have to break that box open to get the nut off. Why not a brass nut it to go question. with? The brass gland. If you make SWA, tell us about your nuts. Yeah, I want to know. See, about I can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to get put his camera on charge, otherwise we won't have anything to film later on, mm. and that would be horrendous for all concerned. <laughs> Apart from our viewers, would be quite glad of it. Right, we have our HO72 Core Flex set up on the racketeers. Uh, we've what have we done there, Martian? <sighs> Pulled this through that. Pulled our drawstring through a shitload of flex conduit, probably more flex conduit than we wanted to. Well, it's better to have more than you need than nine or. It's going all the way over to the bird bath there. We had to get in a straight line to get the draw through. So we're going to now pull this through the, uh, the old bendy bundy. And then we're going to try and thread it through that hedge to get it to the front of the house. That's going to be fun, isn't it? This stuff, we actually bought this for another job. Two core HO7, which is actually for uh, a float switches. Yes. In a um, sewer. In a, in a shit tank. Yeah. So we we pulled that only about three weeks ago, wasn't it? And it was cut to length. Uh, so we can't return it. And then we found that they wanted. Then we found float switches used a three core cable. Yeah. And like, oh, for fuck's sake! So we had to go and quickly grabbed a couple hundred meters of three core cable, fished it all through the duct. 30 metres of oh, duct and stuff. Pain in the yeah, ass, I was a pain in the arse. And then the guy came up to commission and said, oh no, the float switches only need two core. <laughs> we don't connect up the third core. So, <laughs> cheers. And of course, we couldn't take that back because it was cut to length. So it's quite good that within three weeks of buying it, we found a job where we can use some of it on because this is going to hang around forever, this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but this is ideal for where we can use it. We can use it on a job like this where it's low voltage DC. We're not bothered about having a CPC. So, ideal! Mm -hmm. Should we get the hell on with it? Oh, it You're standing work. around with your cock in your hand. It's a fishing job, this, isn't it, Nige? It is we don't want to get our cable on this side of the fence because of people with trimmers and stuff. And we don't want to put it on the ground outside there because it's going to look shit. So, we're trying to get it close to this back end of the fence. Okay, you keep, keep the tension on that and I'll go retrieve it and just sort of fish the flex conduit through. Don't know how well that can be seen. So that it's against the back of the fence. Yeah. Oh, it's just come off. No, that's no, all right, that's where we need to be. It's just a case of fishing it down. And hopefully with it being back against the fence, the growth of the trees shouldn't disrupt it too much. Okay, if I grab that, you want to feed through a bit further up. On we go. And rain stops play again. I'll tell you what, one minute it's lovely sunshine and then it's persisting it down. It's just not cricket, is it, Nigel? No. It simply isn't cricket. But we've got the bendy bundy with our cable. 
Yeah, we got that pulled through. Fed through the back of the hedge. And as I say, it should be quite good there because it's out of the way of any tools. It's largely out of the way of the growth of that yep. stuff that's planted there. So it ought to be quite safe. Uh, we've just got to hope that this, this is just a shower and it's going to pass fairly quickly. So time for a bit of a heel break, I think. It's a shame there's nowhere to get a coffee around here. Look at that. You'd never think that five minutes ago it was pissing it down. Mm. These March showers. It's just going over our head, isn't it? Right, let's get back out there and carry on in the sunshine. I love the quality of some people's work. Yeah? I'll tell you what, we come across some electric gate electronics that are just, just fucking gash, and this one's no exception. Again, this isn't the one that was here a few years ago. Someone's put this in more recently. It says nice on the box. Nice! It's a nice box, but it's a shit install. Shit wiring job. It's a fucking mess, isn't it? We have a plan. We have a plan. Obviously, space is at a premium on our rotten wooden post here. So we've got the, the SWA extending out of the ground here without too much play on it. We're going to... Oh, hang on. <laughs> Cam just swung round and <laughs> caught the handsome chap. to look at you. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, we, we're going to try and mount a torpedo there. We're going to have to mount it vertically, which again, it, it might look a bit shit. It's not perfect, but it will be well sealed in resin. Yeah, we've got to work with what, what we've got here. And again, it's not a situation of our making. This is just what we find ourselves in. Uh, and it's someone else's lack of forethought to have not brought this out into with a decent bit of length on it and to have cut it so close to the ground. But as Nigel says, once the... What's the resin say? It's a total seam. Yeah, it's... it's, it's um, that'll be fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a, about a couple of metres off that and mount it onto this post. In fact, we've got this box here. Where have I put the box? Ugh. Got one of these enclosures here, which will allow us to fit in a two-pole isolator. We don't need to fuse stuff down over here. It's running off a plug top back at the house, so it's already got a five amp fuse in it. What's the point of putting this? We had a six amp breaker out here. What's the point in that? As long as we've got a local means of isolation, so that the gate monkeys or whatever can come and shut the power off should they ever need to service this, then that's going to be fine. So we're going to mount that on the side of the post here. We're also going to mount the light sensor adjacent to it. So we'll have the armoured running from there to that and back again to our nice box. And that's where we sort of wash our hands of all that shit over there. That's nothing to do with us once we've got that back on again. As long as, you know, it all tests out, okay. Uh, and what we'll be taking is our 12 volt cable going, which we've threaded through to the other side of there. We'll then be going off to here to our LED driver, which we may get away with housing inside there. We may have to put it in a separate enclosure. Who knows? We're making this shit up as we go along. So the next bit now is to get that mounted on the post, get the torpedo mounted on there, and try and do it before the rain starts coming down again. We're all right at the moment. But the showers keep getting us. My old knees don't appreciate this wet. <laughs> that Edrush stood up there. The old man's just sticking his torpedo in. All the uh, stuff that wasn't supposed to be on, uh, oh Christ, on the uh, post there, the stuff that our fella had added as additions have been taken off. You can see our Bendy Bundy running behind the fence there all the way along out the front. Not on the fence, clipped to it as the, the old stuff was, which we haven't taken off yet. And actually behind it, low level, away from any gardening tools, etc. Over on this side, we've mounted the light sensor over here. 20 amp switch, so there's still a means of isolation out here. There was a breaker before, which was single pole. This is obviously double pole, which is good because if there's a fault with this, with the electrics out here in the future, a single pole might not stop the RCD tripping if the fault's on neutral. Now it can all be isolated completely. 
if it needs to be. Also housed in here is our 12 volt LED driver. So that's sending its 12 volt supply behind the bushes out to the front. So the next bit, the last bit we've got to do here today is to get those converted to self operation. Let's do that. It's actually quite a nice day to be out in the middle of nowhere when it's not raining. Do you want to uh, lift this off and we'll just have a look at this? I've, all, I've just cut the, I've cut the cable, the hides off. And uh, let's just have a look at this. You see the water leaking out? Look at that. It's pissing out of it. <laughs> what do we reckon they've used inside here? Uh, do you think they actually went with the... More gaffer tape. Way go or connector blocks. Yeah, the old shock block and oh no, those come with connectors inside, don't they? Then boxes. Oh, they might do actually. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Look at that. There you go. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, horrific. And that's why the RCD was tripping. I mean, there's no proper landing on there at all. In fact, the, the screw holes are open at the back. The fuck, there's fucking holes at the back. That's why the tape. So they were just relying on gaffer tape all the time. Monstrous. Alright, while old Slarty Bart Fast connects that up. So these are E27 fittings, normally 230 volt. Yeah. That was a job, eh? Made by Saxby, these lights. Eh? Hey? So I'm, I'm talking to our. Beloved audience, yeah. made by Saxby. I remember talking to Saxby before at a trade show saying, why'd you make them 230 volts? Why don't you make them 12 volt? <clears throat> I don't know why these manufacturers of spike lights, bollard lights, etc. do it 230 instead of 12, 24, whatever. Incidentally, these, uh, these things we're using here to convert the E27 to a GU 5.3 or 6.35 base. Um, like you get on a MR16, G4 lamp, MR11 lamp, that sort of thing. Uh, these are presentation converters, not to voltage converters. I actually buy these from Amazon uh, and they have a lot of negative reviews because people buy them thinking that they can stick a 12 volt uh, capsule lamp or uh, MR16 lamp or whatever, uh, directly into their, their light fitting that's running on 230 volts with explosive results, uh, often I imagine uh, resulting in them having to pick pieces of glass from out of their eyeballs so that people then go leaving neg negative reviews on Amazon saying these are dangerous and should be withdrawn. They're perfectly fine if you understand what they are. They're a presentation converter, not a voltage converter. Uh, and this kind of task that I'm using it on for, the, for today is, well, it's ideal for the job because it's allowing me to convert what is a... Uh, uh, generally a mains presentation into one that's made for the 12 volt lamps. So don't believe everything you see on the reviews. You have to know what you're buying. Oh, it's fucking rain again. Either way, I'm going to be sticking in a 2 watt Fusion G4 LED lamp. 200 lumens. And you know what? That's going to be perfectly fine for that. And it's going to use next to no power. It's going to last forever. Oh, I'm desperately trying to get this job finished. I've got some stinking hay fever or something. Something up here has got right up my hooter. Causing me to snot everywhere. And now it's bloody hailing. <laughs> oh. well, the weather's gone mad. I did have someone say to me, because I've done this before, I've shown this on a video before, this sort of conversion. Did I have someone say to me, why didn't you buy a 12 volt E27 lamp? And there's a couple of reasons that I prefer to do it this way. One being, they're quite hard to get hold of, 12 volt E27 lamps. And I don't know that I've ever found one of a make that I recognise or trust. Whereas I know a fusion lamp's going to last forever. I've never seen a fusion lamp fail. The second reason being that the next guy who comes along, or the next person who comes along to do maintenance on this after I'm dead and gone, they're going to take the top off this and they're going to see straight away what it is. They're not going to 
unscrew a lamp, not notice that it's 12 volt, stick in a replacement lamp and go, oh, I don't understand why this is working. They, that's going to be fairly obvious to someone looking at it. They're going to look at it and go, oh, that's weird. Ah, I see. It's not 230 volts. It's low voltage. Just on the surface there, mate. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. What else can you do? Okay. So I prefer the conversion rather than um, rather than sticking in a 12 volt E27 amp if you can get them. And I think they make them for things like camper vans and caravans and stuff. So they are out there. This is 820 lumens, so it's going to be a, a hell of a difference in brightness, but. What you've got to remember is that these are just effectively marker lights. That's what they want them for. So that car's whizzing around the road in the pitch blackness. See that it's there and don't steer into the ditch and park on Nigel's head. And hopefully we'll see these on soon if the weather stays off us. Hail, where did that come from? Well, the sky I presume. It's just such a mad day and it, it just changes every 10 minutes between rain, sunshine, hail, wind. Ah, are you done with your junction? Yeah. And I just put in a, oh we didn't show it, did we? An IP68 T junction, a picture of which I've now overlaid on the screen using the magic of camera tricks. Look at this! <laughs> How uh, can I have hay fever on a day when it's hailing? Ah, uh, oh, crikey! Uh. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting it down your ass, <laughs> Oh, I've got to get out of this. Let's get it in the van and take cover. Sunny, look. <laughs> the fuck's going on? That's sunny and hailing. Look at the state of my knee. Look at this. I know. In a fucking dip. I'm just saying, we've been here all day on this. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's got past three now. I've got bags open out there. Yeah, it's stopping now, isn't it? clean off my lens. It's one of those jobs, you know, I, I didn't peg this as being an all-day job. And yeah. we haven't stopped, have we? No, it's just been go. And it's just one of, those, one of those things that you look at it and think, how did that take all day? Well, sometimes you get those jobs that look quick and easy, but end up just being a pain. Plus, we've had to stop a few times for five or ten minutes. Every time it's pissed it down. Yeah, but climbing in the van does seem to make it stop. It does. The gods are toying with us. Another minute and this will have passed over us. Look at my knees, look. look my knees. Kneeling in a ditch. It's not glamorous. If you, um, we have various people who watch these videos, although I never understand why anybody does wants to. But if you're watching these, please think in that the life of an electrician is glamorous in some kind of way, then... Uh, no, I've been... This is as glamorous as it gets. <laughs> I've been three inches deep in mud in a ditch and kneeling in it. My knees are wet. My lens cold. won't clean. And foggy. Look at me. I'm fading out of existence. I didn't believe it stopped. stopped. Alright, well, let's see if we can get this fucking job finished. Yeah, have you not, but you know, foot on the floor. Oh, fucking hell. It's soaking wet. We are powered on. So let's uh, cover over the light sensor with a quality Armeg hat. Hey. hey, there we go. One, two. It's dark, they'll be good and bright. Yeah, they'll be perfectly fine for this sort of solution. And they'll use next to no energy, which is marvellous. <laughs> yeah. I'll just wait for the electric gates to close. It's one of those jobs where you've got to 
wait for things, wait for lights to turn on, wait for gates to close. How long do they take to close? Well, they took however long it took us to walk around there. We have seen them working, we know they work, we know we've done our tests on the circuit, we know everything's where it's supposed to be. We just want to do a functional check. So, Marge is going to get closed in and I'm going to break the sensor beam across the driveway here to ensure they open and then we're going to go home. Marvellous! Speaking of the whole selve thing, these spike lights are also selve. You can see there, MR16. These are the ones we put in a while ago. The trouble with these sort of things is when you put them in at 230 volts, you've always got the flex snaking around a flower bed, which is always a bit iffy. I don't, don't like 230 volt spike lights. Always put them in as 12 volts. So that these all going around here. There's one of those uh, IP68 T junctions like we just used out the front. If someone comes along with their snippers and while they're printing the garden happens to hit the 12 volt cable, it's not going to trip anything. No one's going to get zapped. Fuck this day. I've had enough of this fucking day and this fucking snot. More than, more than. And this changeable weather. Let's get the hell out of here. It's uh, it's all very well getting friends, family, whatever in to do a job on your electrics, and maybe uh, maybe they think they're doing you a favour. Maybe you think you're getting a decent deal out of it. But uh, have they really here? Because they've had to call me in to sort out the RCD tripping. Uh, which has left them high and dry in their house over a couple of days back in the end of January. I've had to come out, disconnect, charge for disconnecting the shonky outside lights. We've seen that the quality of workmanship for those outside lights wasn't great with that junction box sitting in a, a rain soaked gutter. The, they've relied on the protective devices to keep them safe, not knowingly. Um, it's been an inconvenience to them because it's like, oh, piss, the power's tripped off. But the power's tripped off for a good reason, the reason being to keep them safe. Had those lights just been put in properly in the first place a couple of years ago, uh, they'd still be buzzing away now quite happily without any having caused any trouble, but they weren't. Uh, and the last video I made showed what can happen when you get something like a bollard light, which is exactly what they had in that pub garden, uh, wired in a way that's the way they can get to. Uh, here they had an RCD and a working earth. At that pub they didn't, uh, and someone died because of it. Um, it just goes to show, you know, you, you can't you can't mess about with outdoor electrics. You gotta you gotta get it done right. Get it done right. Get it done once, uh, and don't take the risks. Don't take the chances. Don't get inconvenienced. And, uh, and put it with some in a garden centre here dying. growing in a pot. Radio it force didn't survive. In. I haven't seen it again. Right. Let's get out of here. Eight miles southwest of Edinburgh City.